Okay, good day ABM and BSE students. So today our topic is all about the accounting for merchandising operations. And our objective for today is to discuss or to define the word merchandising. Next objective is to give the journal entries or to know the journal entries for merchandising operations. And last objective is to give a, a lot of examples about this specific topic. So now let's define the word merchandising operation. Okay, merchandising operations. Merchandising is a business activity of buying and selling of goods. The goods that a merchandising company sells to its customers are called the merchandise inventory or simply inventory. Inventories are reported in the financial statements as a current asset. So that means mean that merchandising is a type of business organization engaged for a buying and selling. In a merchandising, there are two types of merchandising operation, the retailer and the wholesaler. Wholesaler are those people who buy goods or product in bulk, while the retailers are those first persons who buy product and goods in piece or in pieces. Okay, next is... Here are the example, or the best example of a merchandising type of business is a mall. Okay, next is all about the operating cycle of a merchandising operation. So let's start. Pag meron ka na kasing cash, or when you have a cash, meron ka na pambili. You have a uh, pang-purchase sa pambili ng inventory mo. Okay, so kung meron ka ng inventory, ang gagawin mo dyan ay ibebenta mo na. So kapag binenta mo na siya, pwede siyang through cash or kaya through accounts. So kapag may cash ka na, already cash collection, so makakabili ka na ulit. Then, kapag hindi pa siya napapayaran ng customer mo, that is what we call the accounts receivable. But in the future, alam mo naman natin na magbabayad si customer, kaya makakolekta mo yung cash na yon. And, ganun na din po ulit yung operating cycle. Okay, next is the gross invoice price. So, in accounting for merchandising operation, we always record the gross invoice price in the books. Merchandises are always quoted in the original price or what we call the list price. The list price is the original price of a product or a goods. And deductions are given by the seller to encourage the buyer to buy more called the trade discounts. So, yung pinaka-original price po ng isang item na yon or ng isang goods na yon ay tinatawag po natin list price. Then kapag marami ang binili sa iyo ng customer mo, ino-operate po natin sila ng discount. That discount is what we call the trade discount. So, uh, from list price, less the trade discount is what we call the gross invoice price. Yung gross invoice price po ang lagi po natin nire-record sa book na accountant. Okay, next slide is all about sale. So, let us define the word sale. In a sale transaction, the legal ownership of goods is transferred only from the seller of the goods to the buyer of the merchandise. When you purchase a flat screen television, let's uh, have an example, from an appliance center, the original owner or the original seller of the uh, appliance center first had the ownership of the television when they bought in from the supplier or from the manufacturer. The appliance center then sells to you as a customer the television and transfer the ownership to you in the sales transaction as a buyer. Revenue is earned each time a sale is made regardless kung nabayaran ka man o hindi ka pa nababayaran. Okay, next is all about the sales can be accepted in cash or on account. So, pwede kang bayaran ng customer mo in cash, pwede buo. Okay? Pwede ka din yung bayaran na on account. That is what we call the account receivable. When goods are sold on account, the terms of payments must be specified on the invoice. The term of payment is what we call the credit term. So, like, uh, let's have an example. Bumili ka ng product, okay? Uh, sa product na yun, kailangan mo siyang bayaran within 30 days. 
Okay? So, kapag yung product na yon ay nabayaran mo within 10 days, magkakaroon ka ng 2% discount. So, that is 2 over 10 and n over 30. Next, um, next scenario, bumili ka ng product. Okay? Yung product na yon ay babayaran mo o dapat mong bayaran sa loob ng 2 months or within 60 days. Kapag nabayaran mo yung product na yon within 10 days, magkakaroon ka ng 5% discount. Pero kapag hindi mo siya nabayaran within 10 days, pero nabayaran mo siya within 15 days, magkakaroon ka pa rin ng 2% discount. Malaking tulong na lang po yun. So, ganun din po sa pangatlong scenario. Uh, example is the end of the month. Like, for example, bumili ka po ng product mo June 15. Okay? So, kapag nabayaran mo yung product na yon within that month, o bago, uh, bago matapos yung buwan, nabayaran mo siya within 10 days, magkakaroon ka po ng 5% discount. Sales, whether in cash or on accounts, are sometimes returned to the seller because of wrong color, wrong size, inferior quality, and many other reasons. So, may mga pagkakatoon talaga na kapag uh, bumibili tayo kay seller, minsan yung pinapadala sa atin ng seller is hindi yun yung gusto natin or kaya meron damage on the pet ko doon sa product na yun. Kaya ang gagawin natin is sinasolid po natin yung product na yun. That's what we call the sales return. Sales return are merchandise return to the seller which implies a cancellation of sale because of the wrong color, a wrong size, a inferior quality, and a lot of results. Then, halimbawa naman, uh, may nakita kang defecto doon o damage doon sa product na yon, pero ayaw mo na siyang isolid. Pwede po yon. Pero sasabihin mo kay seller mo na hindi ko na isosolid to yung product na to, pero dapat bawasan mo yung bayad ko sa product na yan. That is what we call the sales allowances. Sales allowances are granted to customers if customers keep the merchandise, itinago or nasa kanya na yung merchandise or yung goods, or your product na yon, although unsatisfied with what they bought. We use the account sales return and allowances to record this type of transaction. Sales return and allowances are contra, uh, contra sales account. Next, we have the purchases. The cash collected by the, uh, by the merchandising entity will then be used to purchase goods that will be selling by the peer. So, kung meron ka ng cash, ang gagawin mo is mag-purchase o bumili ng goods and product. So, kapag nakabili ka na, ibebenta mo na yung goods and product na yun. Merchandising entities need to purchase inventory in order to be able to sell and gain profit. We can say that the purchase are also sales transaction. However, the viewpoint here is that the company that account for the transaction will be the buyer of the merchandise. Okay, so our next agenda is to discuss a uh, problem related to merchandising operations and that problem is discussed by Mr. Kevin Troy Chua. Good afternoon, dear ABM and BSA students. So we will be discussing some problems relating to merchandising operations. Okay, so let's try this uh, two problems first. The first one is, so this is about gross invoice price. So number one, find the amount that will be reported in the books of gym and trading regarding their purchase of merchandise listed as 6,000 and is given a trade discount of 20%. So, recalling the formula that was discussed in the theory, we have list price, less trade discount, that is your gross invoice price. Okay? So, using this formula for number one, the list price is 6,000. And then the trade discount is 
you will be multiplying 6,000 by 20%. So that is 6,000 times 0.2, which gives you 1,200. So that, is, that came from 6,000 times 20%. Okay? So you just deduct the list price to the trade discount. So 6,000 minus 1,200 gives you a gross invoice price of 4,800. Okay. Another approach that you can do is you just multiply 6,000 to the complement percentage of 20%. So 100 minus 20, that's 80%. Okay. So what you will do is to get this one, you can also do 6,000 times 80%. Automatically, that is your gross invoice price of 4,800. Okay. And then for number two, Find the amount that will be recorded in the books of Jim in trading regarding their purchase of merchandise listed as 7,000 and is given chain discounts of 30% and 25%. So in dealing with chain discounts, you will first apply the 30% discount and then apply the next 25% discount. Okay? So this is what you will do. Okay? List price would be 7,000 minus trade discount of 7,000 times 30%. So, 7,000 times 0.3 is 2,100. And then this is your first gross invoice price. So, 7,000 minus 2,100 gives you 4,900. However, we are still subject to 25% discount. So, you multiply again another trade discount 4,900, so you will be using this one, times 25%, okay? So 4,800 times 0.25 gives you 1,225, okay? And then you deduct both, so this will be your final gross invoice price. So 4,900 minus 1,225 gives you 3,670. Now, for, to make it easy, you can also do this approach. So what you can do is 7,000, multiply it by the complement of 30%, which is 70%, and then you again multiply it to the complement of 25%, which is 75%. So let's try. 7,000 times 0.7 times 0.75 gives you 3,670. Okay, so these are our problems for the gross invoice price. Okay, so we now proceed to your problem regarding sales transactions. Okay, so the following transactions were dealt with by Lisa Merchandising. So we will be doing journal entries on how to properly record sales transaction of sales transactions of a merchandiser. Okay. So on April 1, sold merchandise to Jenny Company with a price of 12,000 cash on delivery. So immediately after the merchandise has been delivered to the customer, which is Jenny, uh, cash has already been received by uh, Lisa Merchandising. Okay? So we will do a simple entry that will record the receipt of cash and recording a sales revenue or sales on the side of Lisa Merchandising. So, your entry would be April 1, debit, cash, for the amount of the selling price of the merchandise, which is 12000 and then credit, sales revenue, or simply sales. That is another 12000 Okay? We proceed with April 2. Sold merchandise to Rosé Company with a price of 8000 with terms 2 over 10 and over 30. Earlier, we have discussed this type of credit term. So again, let's review. 2% discount will be given if the customer pays us within 10 days, but the deadline of payment is in 30 days. Okay? And since the customer is not yet paying the merchandise, this will be recorded to accounts receivable. So, debit, accounts, receivable, and then we put the name of the customer, 
because this will be recorded in the subsidiary ledger later. Okay? Rose Company. This is for 8000 And then credit sales revenue to record sales for another 8000 Okay. Next. On April 5, Jenny returned 3000 worth of defective merchandise and in which cash refund was granted. So what happened is that our customer in April 1 was not happy with the merchandise which is worth uh, 3000 because some of them some of them were defective. So we will be recording uh, an entry that would give back the cash to the customer. And this is the time that we will be using the account title sales returns and allowances. Okay? So you debit sales returns and allowances for the amount of merchandise that was returned 3000 and then credit cash 3000 so if you will ask what happened with the sales revenue as regards to uh, Jenny company as our customer so sales of 12000 however uh, Jenny returned 3000 so our sales revenue as far as Jenny is concerned, is only 9000 And the amount of cash that we also received from Jenny is also 9000 Okay? And then lastly, 11. Rose A Company paid their account balance. Let's go back to what has happened on April 2. Okay? So the terms is 2 over 10 and over 30. Now let's check the deadline for the 2% discount. Okay? If this is April 2, then we add 10 days. The deadline is on April 12. And then, Rose was able to pay on the 11th day of the month. So, 2 plus 10 is 12, 11 days, so we can grant her the discount. Okay? So, what we will do is to compute first for the cash discount that will be given to Rose. Okay? So, if the sales revenue is 8,000, we multiply, uh, we, we compute first for the cash discount. So the cash discount would be 8,000 times 2% discount, okay? So 8,000 times 0 0.02, this is 160. So we will give, per se, 160 pesos worth of discount. This will be recorded as a sales discount. So your entry in the receipt of cash upon collection of the account receivable from Rose would be like this. Debit cash for the amount that you will receive minus the discount. So, if the sales transaction or the selling price is 8,000 minus 160, then you will only receive 7,840. And then, you record the sales discount. So, debit sales discount for 160 and then we will be crediting accounts receivable so that we will be erasing that effect to Rosé company so credit accounts receivable Rosé company for the whole 8,000 so that's how we record transactions under sales transactions. And now we're ready to pre uh, prepare journal entries for purchases transactions or purchase transactions. So our point of view today is that we are the buyer of the merchandise. Okay? The following transactions were dealt with by Lisa Merchandise. Okay. May 1. Purchased merchandise from M Company amounting to 15,000 cash on delivery. So before anything else, what we will be using in uh, these journal entries are the periodic system of inventory as opposed to the perpetual system of inventory. So in the periodic system of inventory, inventory accounts are only done periodically. So we will be using the account title purchases rather than debiting it directly to merchandise inventory. Okay, so on May 1, purchase merchandise from M Company amounting to 15,000 cash on delivery. Okay, 
So in this type, we in this type of problem, we are the buyer here. So we are the one to pay the cashier. So your transaction on May 1 would be debit purchases for the amount of the purchase transaction you have, which is 50,000 and then credit cash for 15,000. Much like how you purchase an asset, okay? So you just debit purchases and then credit cash, okay? Next is May 2, purchase merchandise to Kim Company. So Kim Company is the seller here. Amounting to 6,000 terms, 5 over 10 and over EOM. So this is a bit familiar again to you. When we have this uh, credit term, it means that we are not yet paying or a cash transaction is not yet paying. Okay, so on May 2, your NG would be would still be debit purchases for the amount of your purchase, which is 6,000, and then credit account payable. And then we write again the name of the seller for us to be able to record it later in the subsidiary ledgers. So this is Kim Company, amounting to 6,000. Okay, so we continue with the May 7 transaction. Lisa returned 3,000 worth of merchandise to M Company. Cash refund was granted. So uh, earlier in sales transactions, we were able to use the account sales returns and allowances. Now, the perspective of the buyer and that Lisa merchandising is our buyer, we'll be receiving cash because uh, we were granted of a cash refund. So debit cash for the amount of merchandise returned to M Company, 3,000, and then credit, purchase, returns, and allowances. So we will be using this account title in order for us to signify that this is the purchase, returns, and allowance, okay? And then on May 10, Lisa paid their account balance to Kim Company. Now, looking at this again, at Kim Company, the deadline of payment is within 10 days for Lisa to get 5% uh, discount. So 5 over 10 and over EOM. So let's add again 10 days to this transaction, which is on May 12. However, we paid already, or Lisa, the company, paid already on May 10. So they will be granted of the cash discount of 5%. Okay, so let's compute again for the cash discount. The cash discount would be the amount of 6,000, this one, multiplied by 5%. Okay, so let's multiply 6,000 times 5%, that gives you 300. Okay, so this will be your purchase discount. So your entry, since you will be paying your account payable, to Kim Company, debit, accounts, payable, Kim Company, for the whole amount of 6000 credit, cash, because you were granted of a cash discount, 6000 minus 300 our cash payment will only be 5700 And then record the discount as purchase discount for 300. So these are our transactions and journal entries for purchases. So now we will be computing for the amounts of sales and purchases that will be presented later in the income statement. So later we will be preparing an income statement but for now let's work on some problems which relate sales and purchases. Gab Company has gross sales of 400,000 sales discount of 10,000 and sales returns and allowances of 12,000. Also, GAP has purchased worth 200,000 inventory in which purchase discount is 8,000 and purchase returns and allowances is 5,000. Compute for the net sales and net purchases. Okay, so let's first compute for the net sales. In computing for net sales, we start with the gross amount of sales. So, gross 
sales. Gross sales amounted to 400,000. Then, we will deduct all of our contra sales accounts, which are two. We have your sales discount, which amounts to 10,000. And we also deduct your sales returns and allowances, which is 12,000. Okay, so you deduct the two, so we have 400,000 minus 10,000 minus 12,000, which gives us 378,000, and this is the amount of your net sales. Okay, so always remember that these two are your contra sales accounts. Let's now move on to net purchases. In net purchases, so we have here net purchases. And net purchases, is work, it works the same way as how we do it in cash. So we have gross purchases amounting to 200,000 less purchase discount. The purchase discount that was granted to the company is 8000 And then we also deduct purchase returns and allowances of 5000 So we compute for that again. 200000 minus 8000 minus 5000 gives us 187000 And that is your net purchases. Okay? So that is the amount of net sales and net purchases. And then this one, always remember, this is your contra purchases account. So we will now be computing your net income in a merchandising perspective. So in service industries, you know that in getting net income, we only have service revenue minus operating expenses or simply Revenue minus expenses is we get the net income. Now, in merchandising operations, we have this standard formula that we can use in order for you to compute for your net income. We start with the net sales, less cost of goods sold, which gives you your gross profit, and then you add other income, which is equal to total revenue, less operating expenses, and you get your net income. Now, how do this work? Okay. Net sales is the amount of sales. Basically, you're selling price. If you're a sari-sari store at ang nanay mo ay nagbenta ng ballpen na 12 pesos, yun yung benta niya for the day. Okay? That's it. 12 pesos, na benta niya yung ballpen na 12 pesos. Now, how do we relate it to cost of goods sold? How much was initially sacrificed by the seller in order for them to sell that ballpen. Let's say, for example, your nanay, which is the owner of a Sari Sari store, has purchased that one pen for 8 pesos. That is your cost of goods sold. How much was, was the cost? How much was the sacrifice made in that goods that were sold? Okay? Parang, we cannot really call it like this, but parang yun yung pinamuhunan in or, uh, sa isang Sari Sari store, nung nanay mo. Okay? So, yung ball pen na binili mo na ng 8, binenta ng 12, ay nagtubo ng 4. Okay? So, we denote it like this. Okay? So, nagkaroon ng tubo na 4, ayan na yung 4 ng tubo, that is what you call gross profit. Okay? And then, sometimes other merchandising companies has other sources of income. Let's say, for example, your merchandising company has... Uh, has also under transactions of rent or other income like commissions. So we add them here in order for us to get the total revenue. Okay? And then that's how the basic equation goes. Revenue minus expenses will give you your net income. Okay? So with that given, let's try to answer this problem. Okay. So, we are given the following transactions, sales transactions and other income, 
and then all of our purchase transactions, and later we will be discussing what do we mean by frame in, and then operating expenses and inventory. If this is a bit uh, unclear with how we do it in the video, we'll be sending this one maybe in another page. Okay, so for us to be able to make an income statement or compute for the net income is we first start with your net sales. So earlier we are we know already how to compute for net sales, so we use that same formula again today. So we have your gross sales, which amounts to nine hundred thousand, and then so we're okay with this. Less sales returns and allowances, which is fifteen thousand, and then we also deduct your sales discount of ten thousand. This will be the amount of your net sales. Okay, so we try to deduct nine hundred minus fifteen minus ten gives you net sales of eight hundred seventy-five thousand. This is your first step. Next, we compute for the components of your purchases. So we have your net purchases. For your net purchases, you start with your gross purchases. So gross purchases, which amounts to 300,000. And then, always add the amount of freight or freight in. So what is a freight in? It is the amount of the delivery that you expended for the asset to be delivered at your doorstep. Okay? So basically, freight in is delivery, delivery expense. Why are we adding it to the amount of purchase? Under IAS 2 or International Accounting Standard 2 inventories, the cost of inventories should include the amount that you paid to bring the asset to its present location and condition. That's why we are adding the amount of freight. So, if you will be asked, freight in, is this an expense? The answer is no, because this is capitalizable as an asset. Okay? So, we add the amount of freight in, we're done with this, so this is 80,000. And then, we deduct your contract purchases accounts. So, we have your purchase returns and allowances, which is... 20,000 and then purchase discounts of 10,000. This is how we arrive at net purchases. Now, the total between these two is called total purchases. Okay? So 300 plus 80 minus 20 minus 10 which gives you 350,000. So this is the amount of purchases that you did during the Okay, and then remember, uh, in periodic system of inventory, we have two kinds of inventory. Beginning inventory or the, or the inventory count in the warehouse at the start of the period, and ending inventory or the inventory count in the warehouse at the end of the accounting period. And basically, the ending inventory, for example, of 2019 is the beginning inventory of 2020. It works the same way. Okay? So let's say, for example, at the start of the year, your inventory is 120,000, and then at the end of the year, it's 150,000. So we're ready to compute for your cost of goods sold. Again, as we said earlier, cost of goods sold is the amount sacrificed by the seller in order for them to purchase first the goods that they intend to sell. So, we start with beginning inventory. Beginning inventory, again, is the inventory count at the start of the accounting period. How much is the inventory at the start of the accounting period? It's 120,000. Now, basically, what happens, perhaps, the company would see that this amount of inventory is insufficient for us for the year. So basically what, we, what they do is to replenish the amount of inventory in the warehouse, they do purchases. And since we have already computed the amount of purchase that they did for the accounting period, we add it to the beginning inventory. So let's add net purchases. 
and net purchases is 350,000. So let's add them both. So we have 120,000 plus 350,000, which gives us a total inventory of 470,000. We started the year with 120,000 of inventory, and then they purchased additional 350,000. So we have all of our available inventory to sell is 470,000. This is available for selling. So we call this cost of goods available for sale. Okay? 470,000 is what we have. So this is available for selling. Okay? And then at the end of the year, we check that Inventory is only 150,000 at the end of the year. So let's try to compare it here. So we did that. Okay? Less ending inventory. Now the inventory at the end of the period is 150,000. Let's get the difference. 470,000 minus 150,000 gives you 320,000. Now how do we call this amount? Look, if 470,000 is the amount of inventory that is avail available for selling. And then at the end of the year, what was remained in the warehouse is only 150. In short, 320,000 worth of inventory was sold. Ito ang pwede nating ibenta, ito na lang ang natira, 320,000 yung lumabas sa warehouse. And that is what we call cost of goods sold. The amount of goods that were sold. Okay, so we already have your net sales and your cost of goods sold. We're ready to compute for your net income dere dere Okay, so we start with your net sales amounting to 875,000. Less cost of goods sold, which is 320,000. Ito yung problem natin kanina na yung nanay mo ay may sari-sari store. Bumili ng ballpen na 8, na benta ng 12, kaya tumubo ng 4. Let's do it here. So, 875,000 minus 320,000, your gross profit is 555,000. Okay? Gross profit. In layman's terms, this is 2. Okay? And then we add other income. Remember that sometimes merchandising companies has other sources of income. So we add that 45,000. Okay? So we add 45,000 here. And this is your total revenue. Your total revenue is 555 plus 45, which gives you 600,000. Less. So this is the time that you will be using your normal income statement with how we do it in service industries. Revenue minus expense. So less operating expenses. Let's just get the total of them. So we have salaries, utilities, rent, and depreciation. So you know that uh, for a fact. So 70 plus 60 plus 50 plus 40 gives us 220,000 total expenses. And this will be your net income. Revenue minus expenses net income. So 600,000 minus 220,000 gives us a net income of 380,000. And that's how you do an income statement for a merchandising industry.